Good afternoon and welcome to the 1961 season. Yes, 1961 season that had the original Washington Senators move to Minnesota to become the Twins, and a second Washington Senator is a, it ends up as an expansion team along with the Los Angeles Angels. And Bruno and Benny want to say hi, so they say hi. So let's get cracking here. <coughs> January 29th, Billy Hamilton and Max Carey voted into the Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee. So we got somebody elected in the Hall of Fame. March 6th, New York Metropolitan Baseball Club formally receives certificate of membership from National League President Warren Giles. They end up being, naming themselves the New York Mets. They shorten the Metropolitan. Yeah, you get it. April 11th, John F. Kennedy throws out the first ball at the new Washington Senators team as 26,725 people attend the new team's open. Chicago beats Washington 4-3. Also, the last time the president throw, throws a ceremonial first pitch in Griffith Stadium. I think that's a sign. Okay. April 11th at Fenway Park, Boston's Carl Yastrzemski gets his first of 3,318 hits. Also on the, on April 11th, the Angels beat Baltimore 7-2. The Angels' Ted Klazuski hits two home runs, and the Angels' Eli Gerba pitches a complete game. Also on April 11th at Yankee Stadium, Minnesota beats the Yankees 6 to nothing. Pedro Ramos is the winning pitcher. April 21st, Minnesota loses a home opener 5 to 3 to Washington. How interesting the, the new Washington team beats the beats its old predecessors. Minnesota loses to the team that replaces them. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, April twenty seventh, the Angels has his own has his home opener versus Minnesota. Ty Ty Cobb makes his last appearance and throws out the ceremonial first pitch. Eleven thousand nine hundred thirty one people see Minnesota win four to two. Ty Cobb, I think, later passes away later in sixty one or in sixty two. It wasn't long after this appearance. July 11th at the All Star Game at Candlestick Park. Winds, strong winds is the story here. Uh, winds in the blowing pitcher Stu Miller off the round. Blows Stu pit. Wind blows Stu Miller off the off the mound, and it results in a balk that ties the game at three in the ninth inning. National League still wins five to four in the tenth inning. On July 17th, Commissioner Ford Frick decrees if that Babe Ruth's record of 60 home runs in 154 games cannot be broken unless somebody does it in fewer. Should it be broken after game 154, there will be an asterisk added to the, added to the record. Roger Maris sent up saying later on, a season is a season. It doesn't matter how many games you play. Wow, that becomes a story. August 11th, Warren Spahn wins game number 300. August 20th, Philadelphia Phillies snap its 23 game losing streak, which is a modern record. And they beat Milwaukee 7 to 4 in the second game of a doubleheader in Milwaukee. Also on August 20th, Minnesota pitchers Jack Kralik and L. Schro are the last pitcher duel to hit home runs in the same game. It's not often the pitchers hit home runs anyways. August 27th at Crosley Field. San Francisco hits five home runs in a 12-run ninth inning, beating Cincinnati 14-0. September 1st, Paul Richards resigns as Baltimore GM to become the general manager of the new Houston team who become the Colt 45s. 
Lum Harris becomes new general manager of Baltimore. Later on, the when the Co 45s move in, the well, Co 45s play in the played in a temporary stadium until the Astrodome gets built. And once the Astrodome gets built, they move move in and be change their name to the Astros. Uh, no, I don't see that it's really related to space because the mission controls and also in Houston and. I think you get the idea. Anyways, October 1st, Roger Maris hits home run number 61 in the 162nd game of the season. Thus breaking Babe Ruth's record of 60. Now he still broke the record, of, and it took him eight extra games to do it, but there's where the asterisk comes in. That home run is also the Yankees' 240th home run of the season, which alarms the Pirates, and they decide, decide to shrink the strike zone, and for the next decade or so, it becomes a pitcher's game. Stats, season stats. Norm Cash of Detroit, who will do in the American League first. Norm Cash of Detroit, 361 average, leads the majors. Rogers, Roger Maris of the Yankees, as I mentioned, 61 home runs, led the majors, and had 142 RBIs, tied for the major league lead. Who is he tied with? Well, stay tuned. Whitey Ford of the Yankees, 25 wins, led the majors. Dick Donovan of Washington, the new Washington team, 2.40 ERA, led the majors. Interesting for a first-year team is somebody who leads the league in ERA. Hmm. And Camilo Pasquale of Minnesota, 221 strikeouts, led the American League. Sorry to disappoint you. That was not a league, major league leader. Anyways, Roberto Clemente of Pittsburgh. Keep an eye on him. Three, a 351 batting average led the National League. Orlando Cepedo of San Francisco, 46 home runs. Led the National League and tied for the Major League lead with Mar Roger Maris with RBIs with 142. There's your tie. Wins. Warren Spahn of Milwaukee and Joey Jay of Cincinnati each had 21 wins. Warren Spahn's 12th 220-plus game season. 12. That's two full... Two hands of fingers or two feet of toes plus two extra digits. You know, Horn Spine also led the National League with a, a 302 ERA. Yeah, ERA went up a little bit. Sandy Koufax, there's another game named them. Keep an eye on the Dodgers pitcher, led the majors with 269 strikeouts. And I think he had a no hitter in this. I think he had a no-hitter in the 61 season. Uh, there's a stretch of four or five seasons where he threw at least one no-hitter, and there's a perfect game in there. Yeah, he went from a so-so pitcher who had demon, he had demon speed with his pitches, but no control. And all, almost overnight, he went from a he turned himself into a masterful pitcher who had con precise control and that's all uh, the early the early start of his career when he was throwing with demon speed is also what screwed up his arm and that's when he that's when he decided yeah i want to keep my arm i'm retiring apparently cortisone shots aren't that good for you anyways season standings new york yankees Led the American League. 109 wins and 53 losses. 162 games scheduled for the AL. Detroit. 101 wins, 61 losses, 8 back. Detroit would have finished first in the National League. Actually, as would Baltimore. Could have. 95 wins and 67 losses, 14 back. Chicago White Sox goes 86 and 76. 23 back. Cleveland goes 79 and 
no, 78 and 83, 30 and a half back. Boston goes 76 and 86, 33 back. Twins first, uh, Minnesota, that's first season as the Minnesota Twins, goes 70 and 90, 38 back. Los Angeles Angels, it's his first season, they go 70 and 91, 38 and a half back. Washington's first season as the new centers, they end up tied with Kansas City for, with 61 wins and 100 losses, 47 and a half back. National League, Cincinnati, their first National League pennant since 1940. They go 93 and 61. Yeah. Dodgers go 89 and 65, four back. San Francisco goes 85 and 69, eight back. Milwaukee goes 83 and 71, 10 back. St. Louis goes 80 and 74, 13 back. Pittsburgh goes 75 and 79, 18 back. Chicago goes 64 and 90, 29 back. And Philadelphia goes 47 and 107, 46 back. So this will be the National League's last season with 154 games and with eight teams. Uh, can't you wait for the Mets and the Gold 45s to start tomorrow? I can't. World Series time. Uh, the Yankees' home games are at Yankee Stadium and Cincinnati's home games are at Crosley Field. Cincinnati's first visit to the World Series, as I said, since 1940. And... Game one, Yankees Stadium hosted the Yankees and Cincinnati's home games with Crosley Field, and I think I said that. Game one on October 4th at New York, Yankees win 2 to nothing. Game two on October 5th at New York, Cincinnati 6, New York 2, even at 1. Game three, October 7th in Cincinnati, Yankees 3, Cincinnati 2. Game four, October 8th in Cincinnati, Yankees 7, Cincinnati nothing. Can the Yankees finish the Reds off in Game 5? Game 5 happens to be October 9th, and the Yankees do finish them off, off the Reds, winning 13-5. to Ralph Houck was, Ralph Houck was the was new manager in his first, Ralph Houck's first season as the Yankees manager, and he wins the World Series. He's the third manager to win the World Series in his first season and Crosley, Crosley Field's last World Series games there. Next time the Reds go to the World Series they moved into uh, Riverfront Stadium. Moving to Riverfront Stadium midway through the 1970 season. So, so that's it for the 1961 season. Tomorrow Two more new teams. National League expands to 162 games. And who do we see in the World Series tomorrow? Stay tuned.